Spectral Lodgings, Ghostly Encounters in Taiwan's Hotel Rooms Believe it or not, there are many taboos when staying in hotels. For example, it's common to knock on the door three times before entering the room and politely announce, Sorry to disturb you. This practice is believed to show respect and prevent hotel staff from accidentally assigning the wrong room. Additionally, it's advisable to enter the room sideways to avoid facing any ghosts that might exit through the door. Once inside, it's recommended to scatter shoes randomly to prevent ghosts from possessing them. Then, turning on the TV helps improve the magnetic field in the space. It's also essential to flush the toilet to eliminate any impure energy. Leaving a light on while sleeping not only enhances the magnetic field, but also prevents accidents when using the restroom at night. Lastly, it's advised not to stay in the room at the end of the corridor, as it tends to accumulate negative energy. Despite these common hotel taboos, some people believe that knocking on the door is ineffective. They claim there's only one truly effective method, which will be revealed later in the story. Today, I'll share a paranormal experience encountered during a hotel stay, all of which took place in Nantu. Many people insist on knocking on hotel room doors before entering, but I've come to believe it's ineffective. To understand why knocking is useless, let me take you back to an experience my girlfriend and I had during a hotel stay in Nantu 10 years ago. It was during the Chinese New Year holiday when my girlfriend and I decided to take a vacation in Taichung. However, due to the holiday rush, finding accommodation was challenging. After failing to secure a booking, we decided to change our plans. My girlfriend mentioned wanting to visit Nantu, so we agreed to head there instead. Fortunately, we successfully booked a hotel near the mountains in Nantu. The hotel had only three floors and was situated beside a small stream in the mountains, which felt nice. Upon entering the hotel, we received the key, and I knocked on the door before silently apologizing for any disturbance. Then, carrying our luggage, we entered the room. Our room wasn't large, but it had everything we needed, with a notably spacious bathroom containing a large bathtub. I decided to enjoy a bath with my girlfriend, so I started running the water and then went to unpack our luggage. However, to my surprise, my girlfriend lay down on the bed and fell asleep, leaving me bewildered. Since I had already filled the bathtub, I didn't want to waste the water, so I decided to bathe alone. Fortunately, there were bath bombs nearby, so I threw one in, creating plenty of bubbles. As I relaxed with my eyes closed, I suddenly felt bubbles rising between my legs. Confused, I opened my eyes and saw a clump of hair emerging. Shocked, I shouted in disbelief. Trying to stand up immediately, I slipped and fell due to the soapy bathtub. So, at that time, the whole bathroom was filled with my screams and the sound of the bathtub's friction against the water as I struggled to climb out. Suddenly, I got a leg cramp. Yes, I had a leg cramp right then. As I desperately tried to climb out, the eyes of that ghostly figure slowly appeared. Ah! A ghost! I crawled out of the bathroom on my knees and immediately slammed the door shut. Then, hobbling towards my girlfriend who was still sleeping, I wanted to wake her up. But to my horror, I found her with rolled back eyes making choking sounds as if someone was strangling her. Realizing she was being possessed, I continuously recited Buddhist prayers while shaking her awake. She woke up in tears. I didn't need her to explain, I already knew. I quickly packed our bags, but halfway through she ran out. I continued packing and found her curled up on the couch downstairs. We checked out immediately, abandoning our vacation plans and returning to Taipei. In the car, she shivered and told me about being possessed, mentioning that while I was packing, she heard a woman's voice near her ear asking, Where are you going? <laughs> That's why she suddenly rushed out of the room. Later, I looked up the hotel online and found out that a mother and son had committed suicide there using charcoal, though the reason remains unknown. So, is it useful to knock on the door before entering a hotel room? 
I think staying in a hotel room without incident is what matters. After experiencing this terrifying incident, I no longer dare to vacation in hotels. But that's just how people are. After a few years, we forget about these things. Probably during the summer vacation of 2019, I had a friend named Ken. He had been feeling down for over a year due to a failed confession. I couldn't bear to see him like that. Luckily, I didn't have anything to do at that time, so I invited him on a spontaneous three-day, two-night trip. Just setting off without any specific plans made my blood boil with excitement. Ken agreed without hesitation, saying that's what life is about. Plans without planning. So we drove south from Taipei, chatting along the way and listening to the radio. The radio happened to be telling ghost stories, but before that, we had to endure some advertisements. Ken joked about it and lowered the volume. Then we saw a sign for Nantu and decided to stay there for the night. We found a car hotel in Nantu, where I had stayed once before when visiting friends. Thinking it would be a decent option, we were lucky to get the last room available. We drove in, paid, got the key, and headed inside. It was one of those garage-style car hotels where you can drive directly into the garage and take the elevator. Upon entering our room, we were staying in room 303. After parking the car as usual, I knocked on the door and said, Sorry to disturb you. Upon opening the door, oh. The room was freezing like someone had just turned off the air conditioning. We turned on the TV and discussed what to eat later. Since it was late, almost midnight, we decided not to have a proper meal and went to the convenience store to buy some snacks and drinks. Back in the room around midnight, we started chatting with the TV on, eating snacks and drinking. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock knock. Ken asked, who's there? As he walked to the door. But when he opened it, there was no one there. I realized something was wrong. We were in a car hotel with a metal gate closed. Who could be knocking? Did the neighbors think our TV was too loud? Ken went to knock on the wall, but it sounded solid, unlike the thin sound of a wooden door. We looked at each other, and I said, Ken, I thought you didn't believe in this stuff. Can you explain? Ken replied, The garage door is closed, and there are no windows. What explanation do you want from me? After that, we both fell silent, and I turned up the TV volume a bit more. Then I said, It's okay, it's okay, probably just someone knocking next door. Just as I finished speaking, suddenly... Knock. This time the sound was crystal clear. It was coming from our side. I quickly grabbed a protective charm from my bag. Ken asked, Do you have any more? I replied, I only have the god of wealth left. He said, Bring it. I wanted to laugh at Ken being scared enough to want to wear even the god of wealth's protective charm. At that moment I asked, Who's there? No one replied. I spoke to the air. Brothers, sisters, we're just staying one night and we'll leave in the morning. If we've disturbed you, we apologize. Please don't play jokes on us anymore. We then lowered the TV volume and spoke loudly. We avoided looking around the room and focused on discussing how to bathe and what to do if we encountered sleep paralysis. We also refrained from drinking too much because we were too scared to go to the bathroom. Later, we decided to hold out until 5 o'clock. Knock, knock, knock. This time, the knocking was strong and urgent. We even heard someone turning the doorknob, and we saw it move up and down twice. I glanced at Ken, whose expression was classic, reminiscent of Dong Po Pork with his triple-chinned face. I said, no, we need to call the front desk to send someone to our room. I went to make the call, and the front desk said they would send someone up shortly. When the front desk staff arrived and knocked on our second floor room, the knocking sound was noticeably lighter. It was relatively mild, but we were too scared to open the door. We just asked from a distance, who's there? The person outside said, hello, front desk attendant. Was there a phone call just now? 
At that moment, we rushed to open the door, but no one was there. I'm not exaggerating when I say my entire body broke out in goosebumps. It was the first time I experienced goosebumps rising to my head. We immediately packed our belongings and left the hotel that day. I even told the front desk at the door that this place was haunted, but the front desk apologized, saying, Sorry because there's only that room left. What did that mean? Sorry? Because there's only that room left? My face turned green upon hearing that. When we left the hotel around 3 in the morning, we parked our car on the roadside and waited until dawn. It was after 6 in the morning when we started calling other hotels to find accommodation. So, this incident taught us that life is like this, you either plan well or end up in trouble. Through this experience, I was reminded of something I said 10 years ago. Knocking on hotel room doors is useless. You must choose a room with no history of incidents. That's the only way it's truly effective, as rooms with a history of incidents usually don't get cleansed by spiritual practitioners. So, do you still knock on hotel room doors? Well, I still do, because there might be housekeeping staff inside doing room maintenance. How about you? Leave a comment and let me know. Thank you guys for watching this video, and be sure to look out for the next Asian horror story. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell for future uploads.